When I began to gain weight, I was a little worried. My mother was a little worried. But as time went on, I became okay with being fat. From Australia, the country that wants to ban anime, we have a public broadcast on fat acceptance. Now, as I watched this special, I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about why all the women who treat men like trash aren't going to change. Why these women aren't going to stop supporting alimony and child support. Why they aren't going to stop pretending to like guys to get free stuff. And why they aren't going to stop using children as human shields. They aren't going to do that because they are addicted to these powers. Addiction is measured by negative consequence, and the consequences of these powers are very negative. As for this video, the parallels between fat acceptance and gynocentrism are just too strong to pass up and not make a video on it. So, when we talk about addiction psychology, the drug of abuse may change, but the mentality and the environment is always the same. Whether it's fat acceptance or the massive wealth transfers from men to women, nothing is different. To start, every addict needs a good enabler. A perfect example of this comes from a documentary I watched a few years ago called Half Ton Killer, which is about a 28-year-old woman who was so obese that she couldn't get off her bed. Because of her enormous size, Myra has been bedbound for the past five years and is totally dependent on her husband, Bernie, for her day-to-day -day needs. I'm big and can do it on my own. I'm, I mean, that doesn't mean I'm... I don't like to be clean. Basically, the only reason she was able to eat was because her husband was bringing her meals and enabling her. These super morbid obese patients have been found to eat about 18,000 kilocalories per day. You and I would be eating about 2,000 calories per day. These patients that are bed bound obviously would have to have an enabler. That is how they get to be that big. She admitted to me, actually, that uh, she would eat uh, three or four cakes a day. Oh, yes, cheesecake. Oh, my goodness. I love cheesecake. 18,000 calories and three to four cakes per day. The best part is that this woman, Myra Rosales, still blames her genetics for her morbid obesity. I will eat the same as my sisters will eat. But I gained more weight than them, so I guess it was my metabolism. Yes, she has a genetically deficient metabolism that caused her to weigh over a thousand pounds. Now, one of the telltale signs of an addict is that they will cause severe harm to themselves and then deny that they have a problem. They will create all kinds of false stories around why they have the problem and then instead of looking at themselves honestly and resolving that problem, they make excuses for why things are unfair. Oh, I'm a thousand pounds? Well, my sisters eat just as much as I do, so I guess it's bad genetics. Just look at her situation. All that's required for her to lose weight is for her husband to stop feeding her. I mean, she can't get out of bed. Her husband has to make all the food. He has to clean her. He has to move her so she doesn't get bed sores. He has to wipe her ass when she takes a shit. And he probably still has to go to work just so she can watch TV all day and eat cheesecake. All he has to do to solve the problem is say, get it yourself. That's literally all men have to do in these situations. Now let's get back to the news report from Australia because that's not even the full scale of the problem. They don't just have the male enablers at home. There are also a whole slew of people telling them that their behavior is perfectly fine and healthy. There are many reasons for why someone might be living in a fat body. For some people, that's just genetics, and they're leading very healthy lifestyles, eating good quantities that are appropriate to nourish their bodies. And to try to judge somebody by their weight will give you a lot of misinformation. We hear in the news all the time about an obesity epidemic and how people are dying of obesity. And what we see is that it's just not true. What is true is that people are heavier than they used to be. But what's also true is that we're living longer than ever before. Linda Bacon, who honestly couldn't have a more ironic last name, is supposedly a doctor. A doctor who uses an analysis based on a single variable to describe why being obese is healthy. Out of all the things that contribute to health, Linda has determined that the only one that matters is how long people live. Well, Dr. Bacon, actually, in the U.S. where you live, 
life expectancy has started to go down. But yeah, nobody dies of obesity. Uh, source citation needed. Oh, wait, I actually have a source. In 2017, according to the CDC, 83,000 people died of diabetes. Looking at the information provided by the American Diabetes Association, 90-95% of diabetes cases are type 2 insulin-resistant diabetes. The ADA goes on to say that most people who are type 2 diabetics are obese, and obesity causes insulin resistance. But nobody dies of diabetes, right? What about lymphedema? That's perfectly healthy, right? What about high cholesterol? What about high blood pressure? By the way, this is not to mention the more obvious problem of being hundreds of pounds overweight is that structurally, our bodies are not designed to support a 4 to 500 pound person who is out of shape. People who are morbidly obese get all kinds of joint problems. Now, getting back to our 1,000 pound lady, Myra Rosales, the reason she was bedridden was because she stood up one day and blew out her knee. Keep telling us, though, that being obese is healthy. Telling people that being obese is healthy, despite mountains of evidence that it's not, is borderline criminal. That's like encouraging people to do heroin or take crystal meth. Only the most morally devoid person could do that. This goes right along with what feminists have preached to women. There are many feminist gender study experts who have for decades been telling women that their toxic behaviors are okay. They have said things like, go ahead, sleep with every guy you meet. Don't worry, a real man will love you no matter how overweight you are. If a woman hits a man, it's because he deserved it. And work that career because it's better that daycare and the government raise your kid than you raise your own kid. These women are so out of touch that they think this stuff makes them successful. So of course they see nothing wrong with it. And most of the people they are taking advice from, especially in this Australian news report, aren't even qualified to give advice on the topic. Our next example, Sarah Harry, is a curvy yoga teacher and is no exception to that. I'm Sarah Harry and I specialise in body image and I also teach curvy yoga. Fantastic. When I tell people that I'm a yoga teacher, I usually get an interesting reaction. (laughs) Sometimes people think that I'm joking. People ask me all the time if um, you can be fat and healthy. I'm not offended by that question. Uh, I feel like it reflects on me a little bit uh, because I feel like I am a a fat and healthy person. Who exactly is asking you that? I I can't imagine that any of these yoga teachers who are morbidly obese actually have students. The way she talks and the fact that she is on TV, you'd think that she has hundreds of people asking her questions, when in reality, the two people who are taking her yoga class for the video are probably the only students she has ever had up to that point. If you want evidence that Sarah Harry has no following, then just look on screen. But recently, people keep asking me to comment more on yoga because I was a yoga teacher. Well, fine. I'll tell you why this chick is a fraud, and it's not just because she's obese. I think they expect a yoga teacher to be uh, a certain way, very small and lithe and flexible. And I'm very flexible, but I'm not small or lithe. Remember how I said that addicts will make up lies to protect their ego? Well, Sarah is a food addict, and she says that she is very flexible. Okay, why don't we take a look at this forward fold? This is very much a beginner pose, and when I taught yoga, it was often one of the first poses we did. When she folds in this pose, she barely has an average amount of flexibility. When I do this pose, I can touch my head to the floor, but Sarah is not even flexible enough to get halfway to the ground. I don't even think she's flexible enough to be limited by the size of her stomach. Also, her knees are propped up when they should be flat on the floor. You can see that her female student on the left is doing it properly, and is far more flexible than the teacher. Second example of Sarah Harry not being a real yoga teacher. This pose is another very basic pose called Cobra. In an average class, you do Cobra between 10 and 20 times. It's a very frequently done pose. But look at both of her students' arms. Both students are squeezing their elbows into their sides. Even the guy who looks like he's not very experienced is still doing it right. Our teacher, however, has her elbows knocking out, and they are outside of her body line, which is incorrect. When your elbows knock out, you lose the structural integrity required to do the more difficult poses, and that will cause you to fall out of said poses. Knocking the elbows out to the side is such a common beginner mistake that it's one of the first things teachers correct. And it's not just those two examples that I pointed out. She screws up literally every pose during the video. So my question is, are people laughing at her because she's obese, 
Or are people laughing at her because she's not good enough at yoga to be a teacher? She's out there giving advice, but there's really no evidence that she's ever put effort into anything, especially yoga. But yeah, keep telling yourself you're a great yoga teacher instead of making actual improvements. And well, maybe you can do that right up until your curvy yoga business fails. Which it did. Imagine that. And yes, women, keep telling yourselves that you're queens. Keep talking about what a great single mom you make when your kid is about to get his third strike. Keep saying that you need a man like a fish needs a bicycle. The men who weren't dumb enough to marry you will be over there laughing in their paid off homes. But check this out. I have one more example from the news report of how little effort these people put into solving their problems. You name the diet, I was on it. Um, you name the uh, weight loss plan, I was on it. I believed that I couldn't do anything in life that was good until I was thin. I couldn't have any form of success, couldn't have a good job, couldn't have um, a, a loving relationship, couldn't be happy in any way. So I didn't try. I'm supposed to think that you're the hero in this story and your response to stress is that you give up. If I felt that being fat held me back as much as this woman feels it holds her back, then I would do everything in my power to lose weight. I wouldn't sit there and rationalize to myself why being fat is a good thing. I'm not a disease and I'm not diseased. This is the body that I come in. It's not that hard to lose weight. All you have to do is not eat a party-sized bag of M&Ms every day. You want more evidence of her lack of effort? Take a look at her final blog post back in 2018. Some of you make me feel like a monkey being forced to dance for your amusement. Uh, okay. Welcome to being a content creator. If you want to make money as a content creator, then being a dancing monkey needs to be your special talent. She goes on to say that she has spent 10 years on this and hasn't figured out a way to monetize her work. 10 years? Are you even trying? Have you for once in your life thought what might make you more compelling to other people? Have you for once thought about what other people want at all? Or is it just your entire MO to do whatever you want and then complain when things don't go your way? And my God, real classy blaming your failure on your fans. Well, the damage has been done and things aren't going back to the way they were. It takes 50 men to build a church, but only one to burn the church down. By the time a woman has become like this, the game is already over. Some of the women I've talked about in my other videos can't even do the dishes. How are they supposed to handle a real challenge? Out of all these women in the video I mentioned, only one of them has actually made an effort to change her life, and that was 1,000 pound Myra Rosales. The only reason she was able to do that was because she was threatened with a very untimely death at 30, was in extreme pain, was a prisoner in her own house, and most importantly, she had a huge medical staff, which was probably provided by the Learning Channel, that no regular person could ever afford. Even so, her most recent public Facebook post of two years ago shows that she is still overweight seven years after her weight loss journey. Pay attention because this is the kind of force required to push an addict into recovery and Myra still didn't fully make it. The female addicts aren't going to do the kind of work required to better their lives when they keep getting everything for free from men and from the government. And from the examples of this video, you can see where these delusions lead. They lead you to being imprisoned in your own house and almost dying at 30. They lead you to working for 10 years and having nothing to show for it. They lead to your yoga business failing. It does all of that and then it causes you to blame all of your failures on everyone else or factors that you can't control so that you just keep repeating the same dumb mistakes over and over again. The only thing that men should do in this situation outside of never helping any one of these women is learn from the mistakes that they've made. When you do something and it doesn't go your way, Blame yourself for the failure and then ask, what can I do next time so that this failure doesn't happen again? If you get that right, you'll be miles ahead of everyone else. And with that said, I think that's enough for this video. So if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so with PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. All of those links are on my channel page and in the description. If you haven't checked me out on BitChute yet, then you can also find it on my channel page and in the description. Other than that, see you next time. Thanks for watching.